Thank you, Josh. And Mike, thank you for coming here. I know that uh, you've got some business uh, from time to time in California. I'm happy this lined up. And thank you for Thanks coming. Thanks for having me. I'm glad we can make the dates work. I loved watching that video and how you and Elon Musk were going back and forth on Twitter. So uh, I wish more of the world worked that way, where two guys with a lot of moxie and technical chops uh, just start challenging <laughs> each other. Well, well it, took, uh, it took the politicians to come to the party. It took people power as well. A, yeah. lot, of, a lot of people you know, really made a big noise about it, and, uh, and I was glad we could get it all to come together. So. Now that was a great achievement, and it was—it's like the biggest battery in the entire world. Yep. Double what the previous record was. Uh, three times. Yeah, three, three times, times bigger the, than at, at the time. Yeah, yeah, and so this may sound a little technical, but could I know the I know part of the answer, but batteries are really solar power extenders and wind power extenders because mm -hmm. you can use it when the sun's not shining, the wind's not blowing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would think about storage in general, uh, be it pumped hydro, so putting water uphill into a dam or down, right. uh, or a battery like lithium ion, like in your telephone. Yeah. It lets you time shift the energy. Yeah. So the sun is shining during the day, you can store some of that, and then use that at nighttime when you come home and turn your lights on. Um, so we'll end up with lots of different forms of storage around the grid, Yeah. Um, but this was a pretty big lighthouse project. Yeah, and it's a project that fits into a larger vision that you have of Australia going 100% renewable energy and being an energy ex exporter of renewable energy, sure. right? Yeah. How'd you come up with this idea? Um, well, I mean, Australia is uh, per square meter the sunniest country in the world, uh, and we have we are spoiled for resources. Uh, if you count the sun and the wind and the water as resources, which I think we should. Um, we have enough solar resources to power the world's electricity grids, all of them, five times over, just in Australia alone. Wow. Um, but we need to have a vision to be exporting that energy more than just 100% for ourselves, which I think we should get to. It should be an export industry. We have a long, proud history as a, as a resource exporter, uh, mm -hmm. and we need to start seeing the sun and the wind as a resource we can export in lots of different ways. Now, I know you're not in politics, not formally. I don't hear you described no. as a politician, but you got fired up a little bit and in an, uh, an exchange with your current prime minister, uh, mm -hmm. something about fair dinkum. Um, sure. You know, we, we Americans hear these words like gobsmacked and good on you, and fair dinkum means basically fair and just, right? Yeah, fair, just, uh, honest, truthful. It's a, if you say he's fair dinkum, it means, you know, he's, uh, he's a good bloke. He's very honest and, and trustworthy. But, but your prime minister used that phrase in a way that uh, seemed like he was talking about coal, burning coal for electricity. Sure. That kind of got under your skin a little bit? It did, it did. He used it in, uh, in the sense with the quote that, you know, you need fit income, reliable power when the sun doesn't shine and the wind doesn't blow. Uh, and uh, we have a huge problem with fossil fuel uh, uh, and the government in Australia uh, yeah. combining in various nefarious ways. And so what we set out to do is create a movement to reclaim the term fair income to what most Australians <laughs> would think is fair income, which is uh, clean energy, it is cheap energy, and it is an economic opportunity for the country. So we're yeah. trying to tell a really positive story about renewables, yeah. um, that we can build a huge industry in our country exporting renewables to the world, and we should be leaning into that uh, for job creation and for, for the economic growth. And you think it really can be done? Absolutely, yeah. We have a number of lighthouse projects going on at the moment to either send it, for example, across a wire, ultra high voltage DC wire from the northwest uh, of Australia to Indonesia, um, so we can capture the sun and send it across on a wire. And we have other projects that are taking um, very cheap energy from sun and wind and separating water into hydrogen and oxygen, right. letting the oxygen go into the atmosphere, which is good capturing the hydrogen and then we can put that on a tanker and, and ship that in various forms. So there's a lot of ways we can use that energy to export it. So how'd you end up with the Prime Minister? Uh, are you best buddies now? What, what, uh, uh... I don't think I'm on his Christmas card list this year. Uh, he'll, probably, he'll probably send me a lump of coal, so we'll see uh, how that goes. Yeah. 
Well, you got some elections coming up we uh, do. next yeah, May do. or something like that. Uh, March in New South Wales, yeah. uh, which doesn't have a renewable energy target and right. should. It's right. one of the last states to hold out, so we, we've got to get that done in March. Yeah. And then in uh, probably in May for the for the federal federal election. Where, and, to um, see who's going to be prime minister uh, next time. That's right, and uh, climate's one of the big two issues for that, and uh, yeah. we hope to continue to keep it on the agenda and get some real change. Well, uh, what about the news media in Australia? Uh, how, how's that going? Like with, you know, uh, the Great Barrier Reef, for example, is one of the greatest treasures of the entire world, and it's under severe threat. It's from, terrible, terrible story from the, the climate yeah. crisis. Yeah, and is that covered in the news media? Um, not enough. Not enough. We have uh, certain parts of the news media that are very one-sided when it comes to the debate. Um, so we need to do everything we can to get the story out there about what's going on. It's ironic that. Uh, in Queensland especially, you have such a massive natural resource, which is a source of tourism, a source of you know huge dollars yeah. for the state, uh, and is, is being destroyed by climate change as we, uh, as we go on on a constant basis. And uh, it is not reported anywhere nearly enough uh, the yeah. work that people are trying you to do. You do have some great news media outlets in Australia. I, I know that, but I know that some of the some of the media has been kind of the sure. way some of the media and that's what i mean i mean you saw you talked earlier about the 15,000 kids on last friday yeah literally um, parading down the streets and and trying to really retake that um that catalyzed i think just the anger of the of the next generation yeah. about how little is being done politically on this issue um and so you know we've been big supporters of them and uh, they're not going to stop they're they're going to yeah. keep going so they're pretty determined the rising generation is demanding a better world it and is you referred to queensland we had an interview uh, earlier uh with one of the ministers from uh queensland mm -hmm. and i'm going to have an interview uh in, in a minute uh you're from sydney though yep. right Yep. What a beautiful city. It is a beautiful city. It's fantastic. Well, in Queensland next June, we're going to have a climate reality training for three days mm -hmm. in Brisbane, and we're inviting uh, people from the Pacific Island nations to also come and attend. And I look forward to seeing you back in Australia. And in closing, let me just say, I like your style. I love your passion. I really appreciate your commitment. I love the way you get things done. Thank you for joining us on 24 Hours. Thank you for having me.